Pokemon has had its fair share of romantic overtones over the years, but there is one canonical romance that towers above the rest. No, not that, I am talking about Ruby and Sapphire. Two characters who defy series norms and inspire us all with a love both pure and wonderful. Indeed, Ruby and Sapphire's romance is probably the greatest in Pokemon history, so let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Charles, how are you today? If you happen to be a mature Pokemon fan who desires more complex themes, including romance, in your Pokemon experience, then I hope you've enjoyed being blue balled time and time again over the past 25 or so years. Unless of course you are a fan of the long running and absolutely awesome Pokemon Adventures manga by Hidenori Kusaka, in which case you have been treated to the carefully developed relationship between Pokemon contest hero Ruby and battle quest hero Sapphire, which unfolds over the course of a decade or more in the manga's storyline. From the depths of the ocean to the reaches of outer space and back again, to the land beyond the side girls. Ruby and Sapphire go through so much together and the depth and power of their friendship turned rivalry turned romance is A-grade chef's kiss material. So today's plan is to 1. Introduce the two characters for those who are not familiar with them, 2. Describe the development of their relationship and romance, and three, have fun doing it. And with that said, kindly tell the like button, I love you, for the YouTube algorithm, and let's jump right in. Whereas Pallet Town Player 2's battle conquests have always been at the core of the Pokemon anime, the Pokemon Adventures manga has never been afraid to switch things up with its main characters. And this is certainly the case with Ruby, a protagonist who, while a highly proficient battler much like his father, avoids Pokemon battles as much as possible for reasons that we will discuss shortly. Instead, his dreams lie in the mastery of Pokemon contests, wherein he has established himself as a top tier contender when it comes to costume making, beautifying his Pokemon, and excelling in all five categories of competition. He also likes photography. Basically, not your conventional Pokemon protagonist. And throughout much of the story, there are moments in which Ruby can be very difficult to like on account of his vanity, selfishness, and failures as a friend. He's a bit of a dick, but over the course of the adventure he shores up his vices and transforms into a true hero. On the other hand, we have Sapphire, Professor Birch's daughter, who is quite likable. Whereas Ruby is a bit of a softy, Sapphire is a hardened battler who is also a physical powerhouse with intense physical strength and keen senses. As a girl who has grown up in nature, she values the natural beauty of Pokemon and initially finds Ruby's fixation on beauty and the concept of beautifying Pokemon about as repulsive as Ruby himself. Basically, she is like a more feminine Ash Ketchum who actually has the capacity to understand the stirrings of the bird and the bees. And while she is all about racking up badges instead of doing Serena, Dawn, May things, much like Ruby, her mind opens up in new ways as their rivalry blossoms into a friendship and beyond. As we see in a flashback later in the series, Ruby and Sapphire's tale begins in their early childhood, when, during a family trip to Hoenn, Ruby befriends the gentle, ladylike Sapphire and protects her from an attacking Salamence, getting Rurouni Kenshined but two inches higher, with an injury that would never fully heal. It kind of reminded me of Ash rescuing Serena at Professor Oak's summer camp, but with more pain and blood that would cause drastic character shifts for both characters involved. While Ruby and Sapphire thereafter parted ways, years and years passed, and the two even forgot one another's names and faces. The experience left Sapphire racked with a sense of guilt that set her on a quest to become so strong that no one would ever get harmed putting themselves on the line for her ever again. On the other hand, shocked by the tears and pain that his rush into action had brought about, Ruby decided to quit training for battles and instead went on to pursue a peaceful life as a Diantha with hairy legs. In their early childhoods, Sapphire was gentle and beautiful and Ruby was harsh and tough. 
but through their fated interaction, their roles would be completely reversed. Ash Ketchum, you got off lucky. Years later, the two finally reunite in the 182nd chapter of the Pokemon special manga. And although at this point, Sapphire has no idea who this much older Ruby is, she saves him when he is knocked unconscious in a conflict with two attacking Myena in the woods and takes him to her secret base to heal up. After Ruby awakens, mistaken Sapphire for a talking Pokemon like a Goofy Boofy, and the two discover that they have nothing in common apart from mild disdain for one another, a formal rivalry is born, with Sapphire challenging Ruby to a competition in which whoever could achieve their respective goal within 80 days would be declared the winner. Sapphire's goal was to defeat every gym leader in Hoenn, and Ruby's goal was to win every Pokemon contest in Hoenn. Soon after, Sapphire passes out from the wounds she sustained rescuing Ruby, at which point Ruby treats her wounds and leaves her with a tailored set of clothes to express his gratitude, but departs before she wakes up. Long story short, the two soon embark on their respective adventures. And as you know, thus far the main anime series has typically relegated the coordinator role to the supporting cast of female heroines, so it was very interesting to see the roles reversed in the manga. Anyways, their paths end up crossing time and time again, they look out for one another, and we gradually see the bond between them deepen, deepen, and deepen some more, as they find themselves wrapped up in a grand catastrophe poised to destroy Hoenn and forever change the world. And it did not take a degree in Pokemon shipping to realize where this was headed. However, their relationship would crumble into a precarious state when Ruby finally reveals that he is actually a very powerful trainer, but nevertheless refuses Sapphire's request to aid her and the gym leaders in their quest to save Hoenn from the impending crisis, simply because he doesn't care about the crisis and wants to go back to Johto anyways. It's as if in Pokemon the first movie, Ash Ketchum saw me you two about to destroy the world and was like, I think I will just be heading back to Viridian City now, but good luck. Understandably, Sapphire is absolutely disgusted with him, returns the clothes that Ruby had gifted her all that time ago, and says that she never ever wants to see the sight of him ever again. At this moment, Ruby comes off as such a self-absorbed loser. Not a fallen hero, but a hero who refused to respond to the call of adventure and step up when people needed him the most. And accordingly, he nearly loses the love of his life and he thereafter spirals into an arc in which he selfishly pursues his own interests and betrays the most beautiful of friends in a way that will certainly break your heart. As I mentioned earlier, he is not a likable protagonist for much of the story. However, in short, over time Ruby goes through trials that open his eyes to his own flaws, to the value of his relationship with Sapphire, and to the importance of her selfless cause. He begins to think that saving the world might actually be a good thing worth doing, and thus the next time they meet up, Ruby offers Sapphire his support, and the two team up with the gym leaders as the desk desperate struggle against Team Aqua and Team Magma kicks into high gear. But in the big battle that we assumed would be the series finale, the two find themselves absolutely overwhelmed by their adversaries. An uncountable number of people perish in tsunamis and earthquakes caused by the boys and the two awaken on Mirage Island, 21 days later, having failed to save the day. But there is one more chance. Upon waking up, Ruby's master, Wallace's master, Yuan, pushes them through an intense training regime to prepare for a final last ditch effort. They train, they train, and they train some more in an environment somewhat similar to the hyperbolic time chamber of Dragon Ball Z. Mm, training arcs. And as they complete their training and depart back into a world just barely being kept together by the truest of heroes, it happens. They are soaring into chaos atop Sapphire's Tropius when everything that needed to be said is said. Sapphire exclaims that she has something she needs to tell Ruby, and I don't know how to build up to this moment because the words are just so sudden and so simple, but... She says to him, I love you. 
and she then explains her feelings in detail, and she asks Ruby to come stay with her in Hoenn instead of returning to Johto. The following silence is deep, impenetrable, and full of the feels. And then, Ruby responds by pushing Sapphire into Wallace's air car and locking her inside telling her that he loves her and always has, and pulling off his hat to reveal the gruesome scar that he was left with when he protected her from Salamence all those years ago. Sapphire is shocked to discover the link to her past, but trapped within the car, her screams to be with him matter not. As, in order to protect the person he loves, Ruby refuses to allow her to accompany him to the final battle. He loves her deeply, and he doesn't want to see her die. And just like that, Ruby flies into the final battle alone. Well, actually, he heads there with the hot mental girl instead of Sapphire. Ouch. Needless to say, the following set of scenes in which the good guys gain ground and then lose lose, lose, and lose some more. These scenes are pure insane goodness at a level that you will not see anywhere else in official Pokemon storytelling. But of course, after a drawn out conflict filled with death and valor, Sapphire does eventually manage to come to Ruby's aid and the two team up in the decisive battle against those two weirdos. Only just pulling off a narrow victory thanks to the return of a friend Ruby had earlier betrayed and the appearance of Ruby's sixth truly incredible Pokemon. In the end, Ruby and Sapphire emerge victorious, the world returns to normal, and both of them achieve the goals they had established at the beginning of their journeys. The two would then go on to adventure together again in the Emerald Saga of the manga, but I will leave that segment to you to read and enjoy, and just say that their relationship would truly come to fruition years later in the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire arc. Let's not mince words, the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire arc is simply awesome. I explained another of its fantastic story threads in a video I will link to at the end of this one, but regarding Ruby and Sapphire, I'll just say that after aging up, they team up with a powerful array of allies, square off against an equally powerful array of villains and characters who walk the gray line, and go through trial after trial that test the strength of their relationship. But the most important moment comes when, well, when everything hits the fan, breaks the fan, breaks the ceiling, and breaks the sky, and the only option to save the world is to travel into space with Rayquaza on what may ultimately prove to be a suicide mission. But unlike back in the Ruby and Sapphire chapters, wherein Ruby locked Sapphire in a car in a somewhat misguided attempt to protect her, this time, whether you consider it selfish or not, Ruby refuses to go alone. His only desire is to be together with Sapphire for the duration of his life, and thus, after a brief squabble, he says this to her. Please, come to space with me, because I want to be together with you until the very last moment of my life. Ruby presents the costumes he had been preparing for the upcoming contest they had planned to compete in together, much like a man exchanging wedding bands with his wife. They change into those costumes, and they set off into space together with no regrets, not knowing if either of them would ever return. And this is a fairly predictable spoiler, but they do return, and they do participate in a contest together. At the end of the day, while I probably failed to explain it adequately, Ruby and Sapphire's romance is one of the greatest things to ever grace official Pokemon storytelling. Ruby and Sapphire's love for one another grew and grew over the course of over a decade. They went through serious troubles, fallouts, character flaws, and overcame everything. And in the end, they both recognized that the two of them are inseparable, and they went all in together. And I loved every moment of it. But how about you? What do you think about Ruby and Sapphire's romance? Are they the perfect soulmates? Or do you dislike them for some reason? I'm curious what you think. And as always, let's chat.